<clears throat> so I'm in Mongolia, and I'm with the mindset that this could be my last tournament ever because I had one chance only to qualify for the Olympics. And well, you either make it to the, you're, you're either top three at the world tournament there, or you don't get to go to the Olympics. And so, you know, I was thinking that that's going to be my last try. You know, I, I was ready to move on and coach, or that's the mindset I had at the time, coach um, and take care of family. And so I go there and fully relaxed and just loving every second of it, right? Because, hey, this could be the last tournament ever. And so I was enjoying my time. I was doing great. I had a really, really tough matches. Um, and uh, yeah, I took second. I took second at the tournament and uh, that qualified me for the Olympics. And so here I am celebrating, and this is the end of April. And I'm celebrating, I'm literally, this is as high as I can get, right? Emotionally, I mean, I teared up. I mean, this is lifelong training and, and mission. By the way, lifelong mission. That was my shirt, okay, to remind me what I was doing. And uh, yeah, this is what I've been dreaming for ever since I can remember myself. And so here I am, it's finally a dream come true, right? And Anyways, I go home, I'm super excited, right? It's been a long journey. I mean, it was a long, grueling wrestling camp beforehand. I trained with Burroughs Green in Nebraska. Then I went and trained with my dad in Wendell. We did a camp that was just, I mean, crazy. This is the best shape I've ever been in my life. Uh, it felt amazing, but this is like a long month, month and a half of training. And then, you know, cutting weight, traveling across the world, you know, and then getting there and uh, cutting weight, wrestling, celebrating, super high flying back again across the world and getting here. And two days later, I call, I call in Bulgaria and the wrestling federation and I say, hey, I just want to confirm that I'm the guy, okay? Because that's what happened. So take it back a little bit. In January that same year, they sent an email to all the, the national team members and they said, okay, um, you wrestle at Winter Nationals, you wrestle at, which is in January, we have Winter Nationals in January, Summer Nationals in May. They say you wrestle with internationals, you wrestle at an international tournament in Europe uh, in March, and whoever does best in that weight class, we decide where we're going to send you for qualifying. Okay, so at that point, the other guy placed better than I did, he placed higher. So they told him, okay, he's going to go and wrestle at the first qualifier, the first European qualifier, okay, just the continent in Europe. And then he, if I were to fail, he'd wrestle in the second world qualifier. And I only have one chance, right, in Mongolia, the, the only, the first world qualifier, which is full world, okay? And so, I call them and I say, hey, I just want to confirm that I'm the guy for the Olympics so I can schedule my training, you know, work schedule, life, everything, right? And so, they say, well, by the way, um, we're not going to go off of that anymore. We actually don't know if you're going to be the guy anymore. Um, we're actually going to need you to come back here in like 10 days, fly all the way across there and wrestle again in the summer nationals. Well, at that point, I had no plans to wrestle there. I just got done training for a month, oh, well, about two months at that point. I just got done cutting weight, traveling, traveling back, being super high, phone call, super low, right? Emotional. So I flew back to Bulgaria uh, to wrestle at the national tournament. Uh, I flew too late, you know, all the excuses. I had jet lag, I wasn't feeling good, cut weight again, didn't do it right. It's just a mess. I end up losing to that guy, to the other guy, okay? I end up losing five to three. Just felt like crap. And so here I am. I literally just <laughs> took second at the world qualifier, come back home, get beat up. Not beat up, but lost the guy. Uh, and so now I'm super depressed. You can imagine. I mean, I'm, I went in, in the span of two weeks, I went to my highest high to my lowest low in wrestling. And, and, uh, and they say, well, and I, you know, at this point, I'm super frustrated. And I go to them and say, okay, well, let me know. If you guys want to, if you want him to wrestle, then just let me know, because I have to go back. I have, to, I have a full-time job, family. I'm a full-time graduate student. Okay, so at the time, I was full-time associate head coach at the university. I was full-time graduate student, newly married. And it's just, it's just a lot, training for the Olympics, right? And so I said, okay, well, if he's going to be the guy, I, my understanding, just let me know, I can go back and move on with my life. They say, well, no, you still have a chance, but you need to stay here for three and a half months until the Olympics. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, I was supposed to be gone for a week. So I called my wife and say, hey, I'm staying here. She wasn't very happy about that. Uh, I called work. I said, you guys could 
inspire me, but I have to see this through. It's once in a lifetime. Um, they understood, they were super supportive. So I stayed, went clothes shopping, because I literally had one in like my backpack, right? And so I stayed there for three and a half months, and that was the most exhausting three and a half months that I had, okay? It was just mentally draining on you, because think about this. You're training with the same guy that, that is fighting for your spot at the Olympics, okay? And now you think that the world's against you, and now you think, okay, I can't get hurt, I can't let him hurt me on purpose, right? All these negative thoughts are just going through your head. Um, and it's just three months is a long time to live that way. And uh, anyways, it, it ended up being where, where at the end, it was three and a half weeks before the Olympics, and uh, they said, okay, well, you guys go, both, both of you go to Russia, and you wrestle it actually in a uh, country, small country called Dagestan. That's where uh, uh, Khabib, right, the fighter, that's where he's from, okay? So I went to that country, um, and in there it's like, it's huge for wrestling. I mean, there's a lot of tough wrestlers that come out of there. But, um, and we wrestled a tournament there. It's a huge wrestling tournament, really tough. It's called the Ali Aliyev, okay? They, and I had like 21 Russians in my weight class and a few other Russian countries there. And it was me and the other Bulgarian in the weight class. And uh, this is like the weirdest thing I've ever seen, but with it weigh-ins, everyone's waiting to weigh in, and the whole, like the head referee, the head official of the tournament comes to the front, they stop the whole weigh-ins, and they come to our weight class, because it's all in lines, right? If there's 10 weight classes, there's 10 scales, and it's all in, everybody has their own line for their weight class. So they come in front of my weight, my weight, and they point at me, and they say, you, Bulgaria, they point at the other guy, and say, you, Bulgaria, come to the front. And so we go to the front of the scale, and my great was watching me. Super weird. And uh, the way you draw yourself into the bracket is you weigh in, and you, they have little like coin chips, like poker chips, and you flip them, and they have a number, one to like 25. And whatever you flip, that's where you're at in the bracket, usually. Does that make sense? Okay. So here we are, we step to the front, and the guy, the head official, comes in, and he only pulls two numbers. Like, whatever happens to those numbers. He pulls two numbers to the front, and he says, okay, you two. One of you step on the scale, weigh in, and pull one of the numbers. And so basically they set up the bracket that way, to where they split us. They put him on top, or one of us on top, one of us on bottom, <coughs> so they can see who does better in the tournament. Does that make sense? So anyways, this is like the most weirdest stuff I've seen, but I step on the scale, I draw my number, he steps, he draws his number, and we go and you wrestle the next day, and I end up taking, I end up uh, doing, you know, he got beat out, I end up making it for third and fifth. But on the way, I, my knee popped my first match. My second match, my shoulder got dislocated, okay? So by that point, I know I made it for third and fifth and I forfeited that match because I was completely broke. I mean, I was literally like, what is the point? You know, the Olympics is in three years, or sorry, three weeks, and I'm broken, literally, mentally, physically. And so, <clears throat> anyways, they, you know, they say, okay, well, yeah, you're the guy. <laughs> I said, well, great. I better start recovering, right? And so the rest of it is, is history, you know, I got to go to the Olympics, I enjoyed it, it was amazing. But, more of the story. Two things, okay? Number one, I learned afterwards, and I wish I learned that sooner, but you, and if you guys understand this right now, it will make your life so much easier, okay? And here's where it is, the first rule. Number one, you are 100% responsible for what happens in your life, okay? If I knew that at the time, I wouldn't have made excuses. I wouldn't have blamed everyone else but myself for that. I wouldn't have had a negative mindset. I would have reacted differently to the phone call. I would have reacted differently to the tournament. I would have had a different mindset. Things would have been a lot better. Instead, I got depressed, I was negative, I was blaming everyone but myself, okay? And that was not a, a good outcome for me. It was, it was a bad experience, okay? And so, if you guys understand that, you're 100% responsible for your actions, for what happens in your life, okay? So with that, I'm going to share with you a little formula that you can live your life by. Excuse me that it impacted me as soon as I learned it, okay? It's E plus R equals O. How many of you know what this is? Okay, good. E stands for event, 
Okay? That event, whatever event happens in your life, whether it's uh, anything, you get an F in school, you get pinned, or good stuff, you know, you win a tournament. Any, any event on any given day that happens to you, that's what the E stands for. R, E plus R. The R stands for response. Okay? How do you respond to that event? And the O equals the outcome. The outcome of your life, the outcome of everything that happens to you. Mentally and emotionally. So think about this. I'll give you an example. If you go out and wrestle and, and you get pinned, that's the event. Response, step off the mat, throw your head gear, punch the locker room, yell at your coach, you start saying I'm the worst, why does this happen to me all the time? I'm terrible. How come everyone's tougher than me? Right? You get it. We've all been there. Okay. Guess what the outcome is going to be? You guys are just killing your self-esteem. You're killing your confidence. You're full of doubt. You're doubting yourself. Okay? And you make a fool out of yourself. It's just all negative, right? Okay. Imagine the same event. You guys get pinned. Disappointing, right? Get them. That's the event. Now your response all of a sudden is different. You step off the mat, okay? You evaluate what happened to you. You go and watch the match. Where did it all go wrong? What could I have done to fix that? Or what can I do to prevent it from happening again? You go and talk to your coach. You ask him about it. You have a positive attitude. You don't take it personal. You don't say, I suck, I'm the worst. You just say, okay, I made a mistake. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You don't take it personally. It doesn't define you as a person. You just had a mistake, a behavior. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. You go on and you fix it with your coach. You keep your head up, and now you learn from it. You got better from it. Your confidence is still up. You're still feeling good and you look like a class act on the map. Any college coach out there will recruit you at this point. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that little formula literally is changing my life right now because I look on everything that way. And I learned it kind of, well, I can say kind of late, but it's better late than never because I have so many goals now and I'm so positive and happy in my life and I learned so much from it. And so, right now, I wouldn't be here if I didn't change my mindset and my life. And that's why I'm sharing this with you. Okay? How many of you have had those negative self-talks? <clears throat> yeah. Everyone, right? <clears throat> okay, last thing I'm going to share with you, a little quick lesson, and I'm done. I'm, I'll be done. There's three things that you control in your life. It's your thoughts, what you, what you, what you think in your head, Okay? Your images in your head, what you visualize, and how you, how you see things and what you picture, okay? And your actions, number three is your actions, your behaviors, what you guys do about it. So same example, right? Or, or let's say before a match, you get super nervous. You control that. You don't have to focus on the stuff that you don't control. Okay, focus on things you control. Focus on what you've worked on in practice. Focus on what you're supposed to be doing on the match. Or in life, in school, anywhere. Visualize, second, your images in your head. Visualize yourself as a winner. Visualize yourself as succeeding. Having your arm raised, right? And by the way, it's a lot easier if you know your why. Remember we had this talk? Okay, makes life a lot easier when you have a purpose. <clears throat> so, your thoughts, your images, and your actions. Once you have a plan, what are you going to do about it? Okay, because it doesn't matter if you're visualizing yourself being an Olympic champion and just sit at home. That, that's, that just doesn't happen. Okay, or anything. It, whatever your goals are. Okay. So the three things, guys. Magic formula, well, the two things, num well, three things. Number one, you're 100% responsible in your life, period. You don't blame your parents, you don't blame your coaches, you don't blame the dog that ate your homework. 
Okay? It's your fault that you left the notebook there by the dog. Right? Just an example. Number two, E plus R equals O. All the events that happens to you, you don't control that necessarily. But you do control how you can react and respond to those events. Make sense? And the outcome will be a lot better. So E plus R equals O. And the number three, you control, you, you control three things. Your thoughts, which need to be positive. The images that you see in your head, your visualization, okay? Which you see yourself as a winner. Smart, successful, impactful. And your actions, massive action. And that's why you guys are here. You're acting. You're gonna get so much better out of this. Got it? Okay. I'm done. Thank you guys for having me here. Go do something great, and you can accomplish anything that you believe that you can accomplish. Okay? So you guys need to set up a goal in your head and believe that you can do it and take massive action in pursuing that goal. Thank you.